Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. We are getting into the final weeks of summer, and things are already starting to look like fall across the country. If you look at Arkansas there, there's the remnants of Hurricane Francine and another tropical system off of Baja, California. That is Tropical Storm Eliana making its way north, winds 45 miles an hour. During the weekend, that is going to be drifting into the Gulf of California. No effects in the U.S. except for the moisture. We will see an increase in precipitation as we get into early next week in parts of the southwest. In the eastern U.S. and the Atlantic, we've got the remains of Hurricane Francine across Arkansas this afternoon. This system will come together early next week, maybe later in the weekend, off of Florida and the Carolinas. And we have Tropical Storm Gordon out there. That's drifting slowly to the west, but the global models do pick that up and lift it to the north, so we don't have to worry about that storm. Checking out the weather across the U.S. this evening, we've got the remains of Tropical Storm Francine in Arkansas. Let's take a look at the close-up surface map. And if you really want to see the details, this is how you do it. Use aviationweather.gov, or you can use my own digital atmosphere software program. And we see the surface field out here, a very weak cyclonic appearance in the wind flow. And if we look at the pressures in the top right, we see 979, which represents 29.79 inches. That's the altimeter setting or the QNH, the barometric pressure. That is going to be the lowest reading in that part of the country, so that corresponds pretty closely to where the center of the circulation is. So the wind field implies it's going to be right in that area, and the pressure implies that's pretty close. So that's going to be the center from what I can tell right here. Now, I do think we have some bad data from this station. If we go back about four hours, they had 66 over 66. The very next hour, 57 over 55. That kind of change would be impossible without a very strong front or a convective outflow burst. None of that has happened, so we can pretty much discount that. But some very cool conditions around that part of the country, temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. Let's take a look at the weather around your part of the country, region by region. Looking at the northeastern U.S., we've got wildfire smoke showing up across New York, Pennsylvania, on up into the Great Lakes region. Other than that, a very fair day under the influence of a large anticyclone. There it is on the surface chart, not just that center, but this entire region of elevated pressures above 10, 20 millibars. That's providing a cool northeasterly flow across the northeastern U.S. and feeding right into the remains of Francine across the mid-Mississippi River Valley. The southeastern U.S. continuing to feel the effects of Francine. Numerous showers and storms all the way from Florida through Georgia, Alabama, some very stout thunderstorms right there around Montgomery. We do have flash flood advisories around Panama City. You can see that cluster right there, some very strong storms. And also around Jacksonville down to St. Augustine, they've got flash flood watches in effect. A heat advisory continues for southern Florida for probably the second or third week. Heat indexes 107 to 111. The Storm Prediction Center does have this marginal risk extending from the Florida Panhandle on up towards Nashville. There could be a few isolated tornadoes. There is still some favorable shear in this entire region, but fortunately, those tornadoes will be isolated. Across the southern plains, I've got this little stationary front associated with a very weak backdoor front with that northerly flow spiraling into the back of Francine. The appearance of a dry line on the high plains from about Garden City down to about Big Spring, Texas. Behind that, dew points as low as 29 and some very hot temperatures as well. As we go further to the north, we pick up a stationary front transitioning into a cold front in Manitoba. Quite spectacular on the water vapor imagery. There's the main low pressure area. That's going to be a fairly vertically stacked cold core low. 
dry slot working into western North Dakota, into southeastern Saskatchewan. And out ahead of it, we've got the warm conveyor belt bringing moisture across eastern North Dakota into Manitoba. You can check it out there on the 850 millibar chart. We've got south winds up to about 35, 40 knots, starting around Yankton, up there across Grand Forks and into the Winnipeg area, stronger as you go north. That's supporting this cluster of thunderstorms across eastern North Dakota up to Aberdeen. You can see the anvils are extending pretty much parallel to the boundary. And as you go further to the west, we get into the dry slot and into some of the cold core convection out there around Williston, Miles City. That's going to be kind of high-based. However, lapse rate's very steep, and that is supportive of showers. There's a quick look at the Aberdeen radar. I've only got a couple frames loaded, but you can see the outflow boundary right there. So these are certainly outflow dominant, not really looking at any severe risks with that. And I don't see any warnings associated with this either, but they probably are getting some gusty winds right now at Aberdeen down this U.S. highway all the way to Redfield. Now I did want to circle back to that dry line in Texas you can see a weak push of westerlies across Amarillo into the Borger Pampa area, moisture off the Caprock, and we are getting a few weak thunderstorms around McLean on up towards Perryton. There's a look at the visible satellite imagery showing numerous convective cells as we get that heating and one good cell coming together around McLean, maybe heading towards Shamrock and Wheeler. And you can see how good this imagery is. This is very good quality satellite data. You should not settle for anything less than this. This comes from the College of DuPage. They've got a great satellite viewer. And there's other websites that have good tools as well. This website, Nesdis Star from NOAA, that's another good resource. You just go to Solutions and go to GOES Imagery. And they've got a great viewer, not quite as good as College of DuPage, but it's certainly some of the higher resolution imagery, and they've got all the channels here. So this is what forecasters are definitely going to use this and other similar websites. And we'll go back to College of DuPage, and I do like them because they have a lot of great tools. For example, you go to product overlays over here on the left. And then you switch over to GOES Derived and GLM Flashes, and that will pull up the GOES GLM Mapper. And we can see that these storms are electrically active, moving along the Cap Rock towards Shamrock, so they are getting some rumbles of thunder out there in the eastern panhandle. Moving on into the southwestern states, the monsoon has receded. We are getting some towering cumulus across New Mexico, parts of southeastern Arizona, but at this time, not really any showers. If we take a look at the 500 millibar chart, this shows us what kind of weather pattern we have in the western U.S. It is dominated by large longwave troughing. We have longwave ridging on the east coast. You can see the remains of Francine getting blocked by this large ridge extending from the Carolinas to the Great Lakes. In the western U.S., we do have that onshore flow westerlies across Arizona, and that does tend to dry things out a little bit. So as a result, we're just not seeing much in the way of clouds, most of the moisture heading eastward into New Mexico and West Texas. And you can see some of the drying there from Las Vegas to Phoenix, dew points in the 20s and 30s. As we go north into the northwestern U.S., a new Pacific system moving into Washington and Oregon, a rainy day in Seattle and Portland, and we can see this frontal boundary, a thermal gradient off of the Washington coast. That's indicating that Pacific energy moving into the northwestern U.S. There's the 500 millibar heights and vorticity showing that strong westerly component into Washington and Oregon with some disturbances embedded in that westerly flow. The strongest ones up there in the Dakotas supporting that convective line and then these others further to the west. And not much going on further south. There's the remains of Francine across Arkansas. And then there's that ridge extending up towards the Great Lakes with a cutoff high across Lake Huron. And then just a quick look north. It is stormy in the Gulf of Alaska. 
yet again, and we've got a new system in the Bering Sea, so we have numerous scale warnings all through southwestern Alaska. A flood watch is in effect across all of the Bethel area, high surf advisory, coastal flood advisories all the way up to Nome. And then as we go into Canada, I did not get a chance to look at the hazards, but they do have a very strong system moving through the prairies with an occlusion across Saskatchewan. Fair conditions out there in Quebec and Ontario as that migratory anticyclone continues sinking to the southeast. I don't see a whole lot of reason to prattle on about the weather since we don't have a whole lot going on in the lower 48, but you can see the remnants of Francine right there, the precipitable water indicating about 1.5 to 2 inches all the way up into the mid-Mississippi River Valley. Some very deep, rich moisture in Florida, 2 to 2.5 inch precipitable water, and dry air across the Great Basin region. Let's take a quick look at the forecast over the weekend. You can see how the precipitable water changes. We do get this influx as the remains of Ileana moves north into Arizona. That's going to be more towards Monday and Tuesday. There it is. You can see some of that moisture start to increase right in there. Some moisture making its way into the northwestern U.S. as this succession of frontal systems moves across the northwestern U.S. And in the central U.S., we continue to pump moisture northward into the Great Plains. So we're going to be going back to kind of a late summer pattern in many parts of the central U.S. And let's take that all the way through the end of next week. Very moist in the central U.S., dry in the Great Basin area. That's mostly due to that polar air moving in and modifying the western states. And in the northeastern U.S., some drier, cooler air flooding southward. So let's look at that forecast map sequence from the GFS and remember these fronts. These are drawn by me. They're hand-drawn. I used to be a Air Force weather analyst and weather forecaster and used to do these all the time. So you're going to be able to see the actual air masses and boundaries and so on. I don't think you get this on any other channels. So let's look at the weather over the next week. We see it does continue to be rainy through tonight into tomorrow in the southeastern U.S. We go up to peak heating for Saturday. Continued rainy from Georgia, Alabama, up towards Nashville. A stationary front from Louisiana out there towards western Oklahoma. Some storms going up. There probably is a dry line intersection right in there as the air mass has not changed significantly. Here's a new Pacific weather system moving into the northwestern U.S., Looking for lots of rain around the Seattle area Saturday on down to Portland. We go on to Sunday, bring that up to peak heating, and looks like we got quite a system there in the northern Great Basin area. Cold air moving into the northern San Joaquin Valley. We are looking at rains picking up significantly in Arizona as some of that moisture from Eliana moves north. Looking at a 70% chance of rain in Tucson and a 60% chance of rain in Phoenix. And that stationary front continues in Texas, but we are knocking a few degrees off those highs, looking at mostly mid to upper 90s for temperatures in Texas. And we've got this system developing south of the Carolinas. To me, that does look frontal in nature. That does not really look like a pure warm core tropical cyclone. But we'll have some strong winds with that either way, looking at possibly 30 to 40 knots along the coast near Wilmington for Monday. In the central U.S., Texas continues to cool off. Meanwhile, we develop strong lee side troughing and maybe the start of a low-level jet. In the western U.S., cold air mass sweeps into the southwest region. Even ahead of the front, temperatures are going to be cooling. You can see we've got a little bit of moisture making its way up from Ileana cooling those temperatures off. And as you go further to the west, we get into some cooler air. High is 83 at Las Vegas, only 61 at Tonopah. And there's going to be a lot of dynamical cooling and evaporative cooling as well. As we go into Tuesday, there is going to be some drying in the southeastern U.S. Most of the rain confined to the Florida Panhandle out towards New Orleans. We continue with a deep lee side trough in the central U.S., low-level jet in place, and this cold front actually starting to stall out in the Rockies. That's not going to make much progress further east. So that will mostly be a factor for the northern plains. We go into the end of the week. 
continued thermal gradient hung up in the Rockies, so not much progress on this. Just kind of a deep trough with deep southwesterly flow across the central U.S. And we pick up this wave around Friday, which lifts up into the Dakotas. But again, just nothing for the southern plains. This system continues lurking off of the east coast. Then we go into next weekend, starting to look a little bit more like fall across many parts of the country with a new blast of cold air coming into the northern plains. And that's all I got for our Friday edition of Forecast Lab. We'll be back on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporters, Keith, Joe Mullen, and Austin Finnell. Thank you very much for your support. All that support does help keep the program going. And I notice we're closing in on the 10,000 subscriber mark. That'll be kind of cool when we reach that. So if you know anybody that might be interested in the program, let them know. Hopefully we can reach that goal soon. All right. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.